So over in the community tab, I asked the question, should the cape make a comeback? And almost 60% of you said no. And I get it. Capes are old school. We've got coats. And I mean, who needs them? But oh my gosh, some of you guys were ruthless in the comments. What a ludicrous question. Gay, gay, gay. No, corny ASF. Seriously, WTF? Only if you're Batman. I'm Batman. What the hell kind of question is this? Now all those comments were fine until I found this one. Unmanly. Craig Miller, what the heck are you talking about? Do you not know your history? Now, I want to start things off by saying, yes, I do own a USMC boat cloak. Now, I don't wear it on a daily basis, but in inclement weather, when I'm walking with my lady and I need quick access to my sword or AR-15, the cloak is a great tool to be able to keep you warm and to give you quick access to any type of weapon you may be carrying. But seriously, gents, the United States Marine Corps, along with other military and police units around the world, like the Italian Carbonaris, allow their officers to wear cloaks with their uniforms. In fact, many units issue them and the functionality aspect. Because of the nature of the cloak's design, it makes it very easy to be able to grab a weapon or to be able to grab anything that's on your person underneath it. Let's start things off by getting our terminology correct. We've got the cape, we've got the cloak, and in between them, we actually have what's known as the capelet. Let me explain. So, a cape is going to be a garment that is shorter than a cloak that usually goes below the buttocks, the midsection area, and it covers the back. Capes do not normally cover the front, although they can in some circumstances. Now, the cloak is going to be a longer garment. This is made to cover the full body and is made for protection. Most cloaks as well will have a hood or a head covering. Now, what's a capelet? Kind of sits in between the two, usually covers up the shoulders and is longer in length. And to make this even more confusing, let's talk about the origin of the word cloak. Cloak is a French term. It comes from medieval Latin cloaca, and cloaca meant traveling cape. So, cloak came from the word traveling cape, and the traveling cape got the name cloaca because it looked like a bell. Makes sense, right? Cloaca, clock, bell, time. Yeah. Now, getting into the history, how long have men and women been wearing cloaks? Well, pretty much since they've been wearing any type of clothing. The idea and the design of a cloak is so simple that we have seen this pop up in cultures all around the world. When we look at the earliest clothing that they were wearing, these were pelts that were shaped basically with room for their head to be able to stick out of and to be able to protect all around the body. And another big advantage of a cloak is simply that you can wear it when you're sleeping. You can wear this when you're walking around. It's some basically, yeah, you're you're wearing your bedwear right here. And it was just incredibly functional. And again, didn't require a whole lot of sewing to be able to get the job done. Now, when it comes to recorded history, the first evidence that we see of a cloak, or I was able to find, was from about 500 BC. And this is on a cup that's over in the Louvre, and it's from ancient Greece. And it shows two people hiding under a cloak. Wonder what they're doing. But seriously, the Greeks are given credit, I think back to 750 BC for the Himation, which was a variation of the cloak. The Romans eventually took it and ran with it, and their variation was known as the pallium. Now, as it seems like they did with a lot of things, the Romans took the Greek idea and they actually made it theirs and in some ways improved upon it or actually gave us the first idea that capes and cloaks could be used as differentiators for us to be able to see who a person is and their rank in society. Now, the simplest form of the Roman cloak was known as the penula, and this was worn by both men and women. It was just a simple thing that you wore to show that, hey, I'm a part of the community. Now, higher up the rank structure, we had soldiers, and they were actually wearing sagums, and these were larger cloaks, a little bit longer, and they had specific colors. So, if you're wearing a red one, you were a regular foot soldier. If you were wearing one that was scarlet, you were an officer. If you had a purple sagum, you were a general. And if you were a general, you wore what was called a lucerna, and that was attached to one shoulder by a brooch on one side, and it basically was made in a color that it was very distinctive. People knew who you were. They got out of your way. You were in charge. You were the man. And this status symbol wasn't confined just to the military. We also saw Roman senators wearing lacernas in purple as well over their togas. And by the way, the use of cloaks as a status symbol was not just a European thing. We saw this also over in North America. In fact, the ancient Aztecs wore what were known as tamatles. So, if you were a nobleman, if you were, you know, the guy on top, if you were a priest, if you were a warrior, you wore one of these to signal who you were in society and at functions. Specifically, the most brightly colored, elaborately decorated tamatles were reserved for the jaguar knights, for the eagle warriors, for the noblemen, for the priests 
and for the emperors. Cloaks continued to be used for over 1,500 years, a very functional item, which yes, they could serve decorative purposes. If you were a king, if you were a prince, if you were a nobleman, you would have just really high-end fabrics, gold, and other precious items sewn into the cloak that was decorative. But functionality-wise, the common man found, hey, this is just something that works. So, we saw this popping up and used throughout medieval times. It was a simple garment that the peasants would use and a king would use, oftentimes to protect themselves from the elements. And that became the functional aspect of it. In fact, there was a whole class of mental makers. That's actually, they were called uh, mantles or mentals, but mental makers was a type of person that actually just made cloaks as a living. Now, for a garment style to have lasted for over 3,000 years, I really think that speaks to the overall usefulness and functionality of the cloak. But specifically, why did people like them? Why did we continue to use them? Well, one of the first things I mentioned is it's they're easy to make. You don't have to do a lot of sewing. Sewing machines didn't pop up till about 200 years ago. And before then, everything was hand sewn. So, you didn't want to have have to deal with a lot of seams. You didn't want to have to deal with a lot of sewing. That could be days, if not, you know, months of work right there. So, to have something that actually could just fit over the body, you make minor adjustments, you reinforce a few areas, maybe actually just use type of a fastener around the neck. All of a sudden, you've got an item which gets the job done. And to be specific, what do I mean getting the job done? I'm talking about protecting the body from the elements. We take it for granted nowadays in our modern vehicles, but people used to have to travel for at least a day, if not days at a time just to simply go to the market, to go to the store. You would oftentimes be camping on the side of the road. You're traveling light because everything you're carrying is right there either on, on yourself, you're walking, or you're on horseback. So, what was great about this, I mean, this was an item that you could sleep in, an item that you could wrap up as a blanket, an item that actually the outside of these were made to be tough. So, you would have these treated to be weather resistant. Now, hundreds of years ago, of course, they didn't have access to fabrics that were going to be water resistant but they did have access to some fabrics that they could treat. So, if you actually had, let's say, wax, you could wax the cotton, you could wax uh, the linen, you could wax even the wool, and it would do a decent job of repelling uh, the water. In addition, wool does a really good job of pretty much absorbing its weight in water without feeling wet. So, it could take a light drizzle and you would still feel dry and it would insulate you and keep you warm. Another characteristic that made the cloak really functional is how it would actually drape over the body without flattening a lot of items. This was important, especially back in the 15th century, whenever you had a lot of ruffles, you had a lot of, let's just say they're wearing fancy clothing, they spend a lot of time and effort, especially the noble people, and they don't want something heavy on it that's going to crush all those ruffles and the other looks they're going for. So, you could put a cloak on this and it would do a good job of just draping on and not damaging the clothing. In addition, if you're just simply, uh, you know, uh, you're a guy with some means because you got a horse, but you want something that can drape over and still cover your legs and fit right on you when you're riding the horse. Guess what? A cloak did that. So, this was, again, a very functional piece. Whether you're walking, whether you're riding a horse, this would keep your whole body warm. And I alluded to this earlier, but ease of access to your weapon. So, 1500s, you're traveling through a forest a couple days. Yeah, you're going to be armed. You're going to be taking a weapon with you because there are bandits. There are just problems out there. I mean, today there are bandits out there. You've got to be careful. And what I loved about the cloak is the overall, just the way it's built, is that from a distance, you actually can't tell if that person is armed or not. So, simply, yeah, you're not sure. Is that, you know, it's, you know, 18th century. Is that guy carrying a flintlock? Is he actually, you know, armed with a weapon? that's going to stop you in your tracks? You don't know, so you want to be careful. So, you want to be courteous. You know, what is that? Uh, an armed society is a courteous society. Let's just say with cloaks, you didn't know what the other person was packing and that was often a good thing. And if you did need to be able to pull out your weapon, you could just simply knock the cloak back quickly, grab your sword or your firearm. Now, gents, if you enjoyed today's video, if you secretly want to pull off a cape, do me a favor and smash that like button. Seriously, by hitting that like button, you let the YouTube algorithm, you let the gods know, hey, this is a good video. I want to see more like this from Antonio. Why do comic book artists, why did they depict superheroes with capes? Why are they wearing cloaks? And I know some of my favorites, Superman, Batman, uh, Spider-Man, not nah, never pulled it off, but Doctor Strange. Yeah, you see a lot, Thor, you see a lot of these superheroes, especially the older ones, wearing 
caves. What's up with this? It was all about movement and the illusion of being able to see where the character was going. Yes, you can do this in, uh, with other tricks, but early on, it was so easy to be able to show Superman or Batman the direction that they're going based off of their cape. And the way that their cape is drawn creates a feeling of movement. Now, of course, as Edna Mode has pointed out in The Incredibles, no to capes because they are dangerous. And I do have to agree. I know this is something that popped up a lot in the comments. People were like, hey, we don't wear capes because I don't want to get choked. I don't want to get pulled off my horse. I And these were real things that happened. So capes did have a, yeah, you had to be careful with these things, especially if you had a rope around there that would not break or would not release you. Um, yeah, that could lead to disaster or getting pulled into a jet engine. All right, so now let's answer the question that you've been probably wondering, if capes are so darn useful, why did they disappear? What happened over a hundred years ago that caused the cape to pretty much disappear from men's wardrobes around the world? So the first crack in the dominance of the cloak appeared in the 1830s, a little invention called the sewing machine. All of a sudden, sewing seams, long seams didn't have to be done by hand. You had factories start to pop up in the 1850s, 1860s. All of a sudden, we're using this revolutionary machine to manufacture clothing that could be sold pre-made. This was huge. Before this, almost all clothing was handmade. All of a sudden, we had mass manufactured clothing. And guess what? Uniforms were being produced for wars. We had wars over in Europe. We had wars over in the United States, the Civil War. And guess what? The cape was not going to be a part of most uniforms. It was expensive. They were rationing clothing. And all of a sudden, yeah, they started forming this very functional item, which was now easy to manufacture, known as the coat. Now, coats had been around for centuries, but they were always expensive. And now with the sewing machine, with mass mass manufacturing and demand from wars, all of a sudden we saw the fashion trends changing. All of a sudden we saw coats become very functional and it was, you'd have to worry about crushing any fancy clothing underneath. You could wear this item and it did a very good job, especially if cut properly with the higher armholes. You had full freedom of movement. A lot of guys like this, they got used to it and they ditched their cloaks. Now cloaks continue to be worn, especially in upper society. They were worn with formal wear, white tie, black tie. It was an item that could go over that delicate clothing. You also saw variations of different types of jackets and coats that actually were a mix with the cloak, one of them being the Ulster jacket. The Ulster was a working Victorian daytime overcoat that had both a cape and sleeves. And at the beginning of the 20th century, things continue to get worse for the cloak. Why? We've got another war, World War I popping up, uniforms are being ordered, and everyone is really careful with the amount of fabric that they're using. We're going to be rationing this. We're going with simple practicality. Cloaks, capes are not going to be part of uniforms, pretty much of any military out there. Everyone is keeping it simple. Even the Germans, during the middle of the war, they actually made all of their stuff much simpler to be able to save money. After World War I, you've got all these men coming back used to not having to wear a cape or a cloak, so they're not wearing them in their civilian gear. In addition, we had the rise of the automobile. And anyone that has worn a long jacket and tried to get into an automobile knows that the bottom of it always gets dirty, always gets stained. So we were transitioning from riding horses to going into automobiles. And all of a sudden, you know, we're now working more indoors. We're not spending as much outdoors. All of a sudden, you had all of these forces conspiring against the cloak and the cloak manufacturers, the ability to make them actually at good cost, all of a sudden started to drop because the skill, the ability to do it started to disappear. After World War II, the use of cloaks and capes in uniforms pretty much disappeared. And with that, the only place that we would ever see these is in formal wear. And with the dying of white tie, black tie, I know you can find it in some places out there, but really that those are the only places that you're going to see these type of garments. You do have some military units, as I mentioned, my United States Marine Corps and uh, a few other ones out there that do maintain their cloaks, uh, which is pretty cool. But yeah, these are really now a vestige of the past. Fast forward to the 1940s, we see another war break out, uniforms manufactured around the world. And guess what? Cloaks, coats are pretty much missing. Occasionally you would see ponchos, but with the ability to make coats that served a similar purpose and got the job done, yeah, you didn't really see these on uniforms. They were viewed as superfluous. 1950s, 1960s, you continue to see cloaks popping up in formal wear, but that's pretty much where you see them now out of tradition. So now let's answer the question, how to pull off a cape, how to pull off a cloak, modern day times. How can you do this? Okay, so 
I mentioned a number of military units. Why not consider joining up? I know that if you showed up to a Marine Corps ball wearing a boat cloak, and uh, yeah, you, you know, you can, you've got, you can back it up. You've been on a few deployments. You just are a salty dog. Guess what? You can pull that off and you're going to guy, yeah, everyone's going to be wanting to wear it, take pictures. And it is, yeah, Marine Corps balls. What a great time. If you haven't been to one, uh, yeah, you're missing out. But uh, I know not everyone can pull that off. Not everyone is going to be able to experience that. So for what about the rest of people? Well, Maybe, okay, look for inspiration. Lando Calrussian. I have a guy down in the comments. He was saying that he has 30 cloaks or capes. I wasn't sure which one he meant or what exactly he has, but he says he's been inspired by Lando and he is actually pulling these things off. And I think when it comes down to it, it is practicality for me. I would say, okay, is this actually going to do a good job of keeping the elements off of me? Is it light? Does it look good? Can I pull it off with my outfit? Do I practice wearing it? Do I feel good? And if you do, why not wear whatever you want to wear? But uh, yeah, you are going to definitely be going against the tide because here's the thing is it's not a fashion trend. Baseball caps right now are a fashion trend. Cargo shorts are a fashion trend. Socks with you know, sandals seem to be a fashion trend and that you can wear that stuff and no one's going to give you a second look, but yeah, you wear a cloak, you wear something that has a 3000 year old history and people for some reason think you're crazy. But, uh, you know, if that's you and if you want to pull it off, well, may the force be with you and yeah, you make it happen. Maybe you want to go to the dark side. I mean, Darth Vader pulled the thing off. If you're going to, if you can force choke somebody, if you can jump over a tall building, go for it. You are authorized to wear a cloak or a cape at any time. All right, Jen, so what video to watch next? How about the coolest uniforms out there? Seriously, if you're into military uniforms, you want to check out this video. I talk about the coolest, the most awesome. Yes, the ones that uh, are, are pretty badass. Check what, check, find out what I'm talking about, guys. Click on the video right here.